Hi everyone. Uh, before starting the today's session, I just glanced the what we did in the previous video. Uh, in the first video, we have discussed what is dimensional analysis and how to write the dimensions for different physical quantities, different methods of analysis, like one is Rayleigh method, another one is Buckingham pie theorem. Okay, in the Rayleigh method, we have explained clearly that you have to write, you have to count the number of variables. After it, you have to write the functional relationship between dependent as well as independent variables, raise the powers of independent variables, write the dimensions for all the variables, then find out the powers of that uh, independent variable. Substitute in that equation, you will get the final expression. Similarly, in the Buckingham Pi theorem, uh, there also have to count the number of variables, then write the expression to dependent as well as independent variables. Then there, there you have to select three repeating variables, one repeating variable should be of geometric property, the another repeating variable should be of flow property, and another repeating variable should be of fluid property. Like that, after writing all the, uh, after selecting the repeating variables, you have to write the number of pi terms, and the each pi term will consisting of the three repeating variables and one non-repeating variable. Afterwards, write the dimensions of uh, all the the right the dimensions of both left hand side as well as the right hand side then equate the powers of l m and t and get the value of pi 1 similarly you have to get the values of all the pi terms so like that you have to do the buckingham's pi theorem so based on that we we'll, in this session today we solve the problems in the each problem i will take and i first i'll solve from Rayleigh method then the same problem will be solved from buckingham's pi theorem so that you will know what is the basic difference between those two analysis and which method we have to uh, use, okay, uh, based on the problem that also we discussed. The, the first problem is find an expression for the drag force F on smooth sphere of diameter D moving with a uniform velocity V in a fluid of density rho and dynamic viscosity mu. Okay, so first we solve the problem using Rayleigh method of analysis. Okay, for the any problem, okay, so for the any problem, you have to first identify the number of variables. In that, uh, sometimes in the problem only the notation will be given, or else you have to use the usual notations. There are, in the pr present problem, there are five different variables. One is drag force F, diameter D, velocity V, density rho, viscosity mu. Okay. So, in that five different variables, you have to select which is dependent variable. How to decide which is a dependent variable? So most of the times in the question only, he only tells us which is dependent or independent or else you give a small int which is dependent or independent. In this problem also, he has told you to find an expression for the drag force F. He problem only new drag force F expression can you decide Therefore, the F will be the dependent variable. Again, F is the dependent variable. Why? Because you are finding the expression for that F only. Correct. If you have expression, find out matrix other than you dependent variable. Then you have to write the mathematical expression that is f is equal to function of d, comma v, comma rho, comma mu. After writing this, you have to raise the powers of independent variable. There are four independent variables. Raise the power that is a to the power of a, v to the power of d, rho to the power of c, and mu to the power of d. Okay. Call this as expression one. Then after writing after uh, writing this expression you have to write the dimensions of all the variables keeping in the mind that for writing the dimension you should know the unit of each physical quantity the unit of force is newton therefore the dimension comes m l power minus one t power minus two uh, remember one thing no need to buy hard the things here so what you have to do is just remember force is equal to mass into acceleration write the dimension for mass write the dimension for acceleration you will arrive at this. It is as simple as that. The unit of the diameter is meter, therefore L. Unit of velocity is meter per second, therefore diameter is LT power minus 1. The unit of the density is kg per meter cube, therefore it is M L power minus 3. Then the unit of the viscosity is Newton second per meter square, therefore it is M L power minus 1 T power minus 1. After writing the dimensions, you have to substitute, you have to write the dimensions in this expression. See, therefore, it is the dimension of F is equal to like this. The powers, don't forget that inside the bracket you have to take. 
Now we equate the powers of L on both left hand side as well as right hand side. In the left hand side, the power of L is 1, therefore I have written 1 is equal to here the power of L is A, here the power of L is minus B, okay, keep sign also, sorry, the power of L is B, therefore A plus B, here the power of L is minus 3C, therefore it is minus 3C, only you have to write here the power of L, L power minus 1 to D means it is L power minus D, therefore the power is minus D. This is the first expression. Next, equating the powers of M, here it is 1 is equal to there is no M, there is no M, here it is C, here it is D, C plus D, okay, that is the second. The third equation is getting by equating the powers of P, here it is minus 2 is equal to here the powers of T means it is minus B, here there is no t, here it is minus d, okay? That is the third equation you have got. But you have got four number of unknowns here. That is four unknowns, a, b, c, and d, but you have got only three equations. It is not possible to find all the four unknowns by using only three equations, okay? So what we have to do is, so there is an one equation short at this. So what we have to do is write the three unknowns in terms of other means these are the four indices we are having a, b, c and d. Write the three unknowns in terms of other. For example, if you, I'll write a, b and c in terms of d or else you have to write b, c and d in terms of a or else c, d and a in terms of b. Like that you have to write, okay, you have to select which variable you want, you can select. So that's why I have written here, express the three indices means unknowns in terms of other one. From the equation two, you can write C is equal to 1 minus D. Now, I have written C in terms of D. That is finished. From the equation 3 here, that's the third equation, you can write B is equal to 2 minus of D. Means B will go to this side, it becomes plus B. Minus 2 comes to this. Uh, right hand side becomes plus 2, 2 minus of D. Now, I have written C in terms of D. I have written B in terms of D. Just the remaining here, I should write A in terms of D. So, now you take this first equation. That is 1 is equal to a plus b minus 3c minus d. To substitute the value of b and c, which is already in d, that value we have substituted here. Simplify, you arrive at a is equal to 2 minus of d. Now you can make a cross check. I have written a in terms of d, b in terms of d, c in terms of d. So I have selected three or I have expressed the three indices in terms of other one. Now, substitute this value of ABC in this first equation, whatever that is the functional equation is there, no? there you have to substitute. Therefore, F is equal to F of D to the power of 2 minus D because A means 2 minus D, V to the power of 2 minus D, rho to the power of 1 minus D, mu to the power of D. Now, you take, you separate this, that is D, D square into D to the power of minus D, V square into V to the power of minus D, rho into V to the power of minus D, mu into to the power of d. Now you take out the variables which is having the powers constant. Here you observe it is d square, it is a constant, v square is constant, rho to the power of 1 is constant. Okay, only these three, you take this outside the function that is rho, v square, d square have taken means the powers which is having a constant. Yava power salibari numbers matra Anta value na nanu work to Remaining any delay d power minus d, v power minus d, rho power minus d, mu power d ulito. So ili minus d radana nan in martini. If I take to the denominator, it becomes plus. Therefore, a little d mate v mate rho here murunu denominator. Either positive rather than the mu numerator rule for therefore it is mu divided by d v rho whole to the power of d. So, you observe here, here it is an negative indices. So, denominator it becomes positive, therefore, to the power of D. Therefore, the final expression is F is equal to rho V square D square phi of. And so, here I have removed the function symbol, I have taken a phi, phi of mu divided by D, V and rho to the power of D. This is your expression for drag force. Now, the same problem will be solved using Buckingham's Pi theorem. So, in the Buckingham's Pi theorem also, the number of variables is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 only. All the variables you have to write, both independent as well as dependent. So, all the 5 I have written. We are deriving an expression for F means F becomes dependent variable. 
Now here you count the number of variables. M is equal to five. N is equal. The fundamental is equal to three. Number of pi terms required is equal to M minus of N. Therefore, it is pi minus of three is equal to two. Two pi terms you have to obtain. Now selecting the repeating variables. Okay. So always you write all the variables one below the other like this. Now in order to select the repeating variables, you have to remember that three. Repeating variables to select one should be of geometric property. Geometric property means the unit should be meter. So, only diameter is a unit meter. There is a first repeating variable. The second one is from the flow property. Flow property means either velocity or acceleration, angular acceleration. In this problem, velocity is given. Take velocity. The third is fluid property. Fluid property means density or unit weight. Or viscosity, surface tension, like that. Here, both density as well as viscosity is given. Any one you can select as in the third repeating variable. So here, I have selected density. So these are my three repeating variables. Now, how to write the first pi term? Two pi terms. Pi one is equal to first. You have to write three repeating variables d, v, and rho into one non-repeating variable. So three repeating variable means the remaining two are non-repeating variable. Therefore, into f. Now you raise the powers of repeating variables only d to the power of a one, v to the power of b one, rho to the power of c one. We call that as equation one. Similarly, the second pi term is equal to the second pi term also consisting of all the three repeating variables d, v, and rho into the one non-repeating variable that is mu, that is two. Here also you have to raise the powers of the repeating variable d to the power of a two, v to the power of b two, rho to the power of c two. This is equation two. From using these two one and two, you have to find what is the power of what is the value of a one, b one, c one, a two, b two, c two. You select each pi term once. So before that, I have to write the dimension for all the variables. Here you have to write the five variables and write the dimension of all the five variables, like you did in Rayleigh method. Then substitute this in the first pi term. Expression for pi one. Pi one is equal to uh, d. You write the dimension of all the terms. That is l to the power of a one like this. Okay, here the pi one is a constant value. This dimension becomes m to the power of zero, l to the power of zero, t to the power of zero means it is not having any unit pi one because it is a constant. So constant means therefore I have for the simplification purpose I have written it as m to the power of zero, l to the power of zero, t to the power of zero. Simplification purpose is and Burkhonde did not understand. Because constant, constant other dimension is not there. Dimension is not there. Under m zero, l zero, t zero. Now you equate the powers of L on both sides. Here the power of L is zero. Here it is a one. Here it is plus b one. Here it is minus three c one plus one. Zero is equal to a one plus b one minus three c one plus one. That is first. Equating the powers of M. Here it is zero. Here it is c one. Here it is one. Okay. That is c one plus one. That is two. Equating the powers of t here, it is zero is equal to minus b one minus two minus b one. From using these three equation, find out the values of c one, b one, and a one. Here directly, I can find from this equation two, I can write c one is equal to minus one. From equation three, this one b one is equal to minus two. Correct? Then substitute this value of c one and b one here. You get the value of a one. A one is also minus two. Now, after getting the unknown a one, b one, and c one, substitute in this pi term that is first. Therefore, pi one is equal to d to the power of a two, v to the power of b two, rho to the power of c two into mu. Okay. <clears throat> so this one. So that is sorry here. There is d to the power of minus two, v to the power of minus two, rho to the power of minus one into f. Therefore. Pi one is equal to here. All is having the constant, and it is negative. Take to the denominator, it becomes positive. F is equal to d square v square into rho. Negative here, the denominator got put in agatha positive agatha. Step powers. Similarly, other thera. Now you take the expression for the second pi term. Pi two is equal to d power a two v power b two rho power c two into mu. You write the dimensions for all here. The same. Equate the powers of L. On both the side, zero is equal to a two plus b two minus three c two minus one. Equating the powers of m, zero is equal to c two plus one. Equating the powers of t, you'll get zero minus b two minus one. 
using this three equation, you can directly write C2 is equal to minus 1, B2 is also minus 1. Substitute both C2 and B2 in this equation, you'll get A2 values minus 1. Substitute all these values in that equation to make that is pi 2. Pi 2 is equal to D power minus 1, V power minus 1, rho power minus 2 value of it. So that is A2, B2 minus C2 into mu. Therefore, this is negative. If you go to the denominator, it becomes positive. Mu divided by rho, V and D. Now, I have got both the pi term values. Therefore, pi 1 is equal to function of pi 2. Pi 1 value is F divided by D square V square rho is equal to F of mu divided by rho V D. Therefore, F because I need the value. I need the expression for the drag force F. Therefore, F I keep on the left hand side which is equal to rho V square D square into function of mu by rho V D. That is F is equal to rho V square D square into pi of mu divided by rho V D. This is the expression I have got using the Buckingham's pi theorem. You can cross check with the Rayleigh method also. We have got the same expression. Means any method you can use, you can get the same expression. But the thing is, which method is suitable for this type of problem that you have discussed? Okay, the same problem we have discussed. Now, second problem. Now, I'll reduce the number of variables. What happens? First, we have taken five variables. We have solved using Rayleigh method as well as Buckingham Pi theorem. We got the same expression. Now I'll take only three variables. Very simple problem. The time period T of a pendulum depends on the length L of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity G. Derive an expression for the time period. Derive an expression for the time period and that put it on the right. Time period is a dependent variable. The remaining is independent variable. How many variables are there? Time period T, length L, gravity G. Only three. In that three, T is dependent, the remaining two is independent. Therefore, dependent variable T is equal to the function of L into G L to the power of A due to the power of A. This is the Rayleigh method. Call that as equation one. Then write the dimensions that is time period T, length meter L, G acceleration to gravity meter per second square, L T power minus two. Substitute in this equation, you will get. T is equal to F of L power A, L T power minus 2 to the power of T, equate the powers of L. Here it is, only T is there means, what is the power of L? 0. Here only T. What is the power of M? 0. What is the power of T? 1. Correct? In the left hand side, L0, M0, T1. This is equal to F of like this. Now equating the powers of L, you get 0 is equal to A plus B. Next, equate the powers of T. That is, equate the powers of T, 1 is equal to minus 2B. No need to equate the powers of M because in the right hand side there is no M. Because only two fundamental units are there means there is no M means only two equation. Therefore, from this you can write B is equal to minus half. Substitute this B here, A is equal to plus half. Substitute T is equal to F into L to the power of half, comma G to the power of minus half. Therefore, minus half, you take it to the denominator. F of L of divided by G to the power of half is equal to T is equal to pi of root of L by G. This is the expression for the time period T of the pendulum. Correct? The same problem we'll solve in Buckingham's pi theorem. I'll tell you why I have taken this problem. Now, there are only three variables. Okay. Till now, we have taken three repeating variables, but there are only three variable. I can't take the three repeating variable means then we have the condition that the number of repeating variable is equal to the number of fundamental units. What is the unit of time? Second. What is the unit of length? Meter. What is the unit of G meter per second square means? In this, there are only two fundamental units. You observe here, only two, that is seconds and meter. There is no mass, that is kg is not there. Means only two uh, fundamental units, therefore only two repeating variables. That's why I have taken this problem. Okay. Therefore, that is m is equal to 3, n is equal to 2. m means number of variables, n is number of that is uh, fundamental units. Only two is there, that is number of pi term is only one. Therefore, pi 1 is equal to L power A1, G power B1 into T. That is the first expression because these are the two repeating variables. Why I have taken, why I have not taken T as a repeating variable? Because repeating variable should not be an dependent variable. 
ಅದಕ್ಕೇನೆ ರಿಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ವೇರಿಯಬಲ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ವೇರಿಯಬಲ್ ಆಗಿರಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತಿದೆ ದೇರ್ಫೋರ್ ಉಳಿದಿರದೇ ಇನ್ನೆರಡು ಲೆಂತ್ ಮತ್ತು ಆಕ್ಸಲರ್ ಇಂಟು ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಟೂ ರಿಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ವೇರಿಯಬಲ್ ಯು ರೈಸ್ ದ ಪವರ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟು ಒನ್ ನಾನ್ ರಿಪೀಟಿಂಗ್ ವೇರಿಯಬಲ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ದ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಈಕ್ವೇಟ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲ್ ಪಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಎಂ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಆಸ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಎ ಒನ್ ಆಸ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಫೈ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎಲ್ ಟು ದಿ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಇಂಟು ಪಿ ಫೈ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಜಿ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಎಲ್ ಪವರ್ ಹಾಫ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿ ಇಸ್ ಇ ಫೈ ಒನ್ ಯು ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೈ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಓಕೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಟಿ ಹಾಗೆ ಇದೆ ನೋಡಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಟಿ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ ಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಟು ದ ಅನದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ it becomes t is equal to l to the power of half divided by g to the power of half into pi 1 so therefore pi 1 into root of l by g pi 1 is a constant that i have removed and i have taken pi root of l divided by g that is the expression the same expression you have got in really method also okay then we'll move on to the problem number 3 find the expression for the power p developed by a pump when p depends upon the head h the discharge q and the specific weight gamma here i leave this problem to work out yourself okay because there is only four number of variable you take the four number of variable you solve you arrive at this final expression that is p is equal to pi of h q into gamma this is gamma specific weight okay be careful while you write you have to get this expression similarly buckingham's pi theorem also you have to i have taken this three repeating variables okay this also you should solve and get this final expression if you are not getting this expression kindly leave the comment in the comment box below so that we can discuss together okay next we'll move on to the fourth problem here the number of variables are more the resisting force r of a supersonic plane during flight can be considered as dependent upon the length of the aircraft velocity v air viscosity mu air density rho and bulk modulus of air k express the functional relationship between these variables and the resisting force okay so you count the number of variable resisting force r 1 then length l velocity v air viscosity mu air density rho bulk modulus k there are six different variables in the six different variables which is the dependent variable here clearly in the question only has given express the functional relationship between all these variables and the resisting force means the resisting force is the dependent variable remaining five are independent variable see i tell you honestly that if you solve this problem correctly okay think that your dimension analysis the on the railing method as well as buckingham's pi theorem is finished it is very as simple as that okay uh understand this problem because it consisting of six number of variables in that one is dependent another five are independent variable here the railing method i have written here r is equal to f of l to the power of a v to the means after writing or independent variable to raise the power of independent variable after raising the power i have written l to the power of a v to the power of b mu to the power of c rho to the power of d and k to the power of e correct so that is the first equation and now you write the dimension of all the variable resisting force r means it is force only m l t power minus 2 then l that is length that is uh, meter l velocity meter per second lt power minus 1 mu viscosity newton second power meter square that is then rho density kg per meter cube okay k bulk modulus newton per meter square you substitute you will get it is m l power minus 1 t power minus 2 like this okay so now you substitute the dimensions here i have written the dimension now i will get the power of l now you observe it. equating the power of l i'll get in the right hand side it is so left hand side it is 1 is equal to a plus b minus c minus 3d plus minus e that is the first one equating the powers of m 1 is equal to here there is no m c plus d plus e that is second equating the powers of t minus 2 is equal to minus b minus c minus 2e 
call that as three. Now, now comes the picture. That is the real thing is there are only three equations. But the number of unknowns is 5. Three equation number of unknowns is 5. Means number of unknowns is more than the available equation. Means here you have to write three unknowns in terms of two. Means because there are extra two equations are required in order to solve this. But what we have to do is there are only three equations, but number of unknowns is 5. 5 minus of 3 is equal to 2. Therefore, you have to express the three unknowns or the three indices in terms of other two means if i take a b and c i have to express in terms of b and e if i take c d and e i have to express c d and e in terms of a and b like that okay expressing three indices in terms of other two so you have to count the number of variables the number of variables in other other equation so you have to one express Five unknowns is a three equation first day erodo. So in a word of two more na in error express model. So now you select the equation. Below stand equation you have first select model, which is having the least number of unknowns. Till equation two mathe equation three error to more unknown is there. I will take equation two. Where from the equation two I can write C is equal to D one minus of D minus E. C is equal to. Now I have written C in terms of D and E. Next, from this equation 3, I can write minus C value and I have already got to that. I will substitute Martini. Therefore, minus 2 is equal to minus D minus C. There. Therefore, it is minus 1 plus D plus E minus 2E. After simplifying, I will get D is equal to 1 minus E plus D. Now I have written C in terms of D and E, B in terms of D and E. Now remaining A in terms of E and DL variable. Substituting the values of B and C. Now you will take the first equation. Now substitute Madi B mathe C nali. You will get A is equal to 1 plus D plus E. Okay. Be careful. This one is A is equal to 1 plus D plus E. I will get. Now I have written A in terms of D and E. Nodi A in terms of D and E is there. B also in terms of E and D is there. C also in terms of E and D is there. Now I can substitute in that main equation. R is equal to f of L to the power of 1 plus is value A, B, C to value is D as it is, E as it is. Now you separate this terms and take out the constant outside. You will L is there, V is there, mu is there. More Remaining error nodi. D is one correct for E is the powers one correct for D is the other L. New row. Yeah, the negative is denominator. Therefore, L e row divided by mu mu to the power of minus d is a denominator goes plus d agote whole to the power of t. Similarly, e l v to the power of minus e mu to the power of minus e k. So l into k are the positive, negative is the denominator kalsi, v mate o to the power of e. This is your final expression. R is equal to L V mu phi of l k divided by v into mu whole to the power of e rho l v by mu whole to the power of t means what does it indicates as the number of unknowns or the number of variables increases this Rayleigh method becomes little complex or it becomes tedious procedure in other way you have to write three in terms of two substitution lots of substitution here and you have to arrive at the final expression now we'll see the same problem but we have spike here you have to write all the variables one below the other m is equal to 6 n number of fundamental units is equal to 3 therefore number of pi term is equal to 6 minus of 3 that is 3 pi terms you have to write now selecting repeating variable one repeating variable should be of geometric property that is meter length to one degree in on the velocity to one degree in on the density to how to select name you already had it in mind so i no need to repeat again so these are the three repeating variables. Now, pi one is equal to three repeating variable into one non-repeating variable. You raise the powers of three repeating variables. Okay. So pi one, then equate the powers of L, M, and T. Directly got the values. Substitute. You will get pi one is equal to R divided by root B square L square. Expression for pi two, three repeating variable. Raise the power into one non-repeating variable. You write the dimensions. 
Equate the powers of L, M, and T. You get the pi two as mu by rho L B. Similarly, pi three. You equate, uh, write the dimensions, equate the powers. You get the pi three as k by rho B square. Now the function which so pi one is equal to function of pi two comma pi three. Clearly, you can write, sir. Pi two is equal to function of pi one comma pi three by par da. Yes, you can write, but problemally, yes, as what is the expression for the resisting force? Resisting force, yeah, pi term only. Then note for that is pi one. Pi one is equal to f of pi two comma pi three. See, r by l, r is equal to rho l square v square pi of mu by rho l b into k by rho v square. This is your expression. You can compare these expression with the expression whatever you got in your uh, daily method. You almost got the same expression. Okay, so this is the. Uh, expression, but and one more thing, you have to check the dimensional homogeneity of this equation. Means the left hand side should the dimensions of the left hand side should be equal to the dimensions of right hand side. In the right hand side, this is one term. The dimension of this term is same as the dimension of R. This is the second term. The dimension of this term is same as R. This is the third term. Dimension of this term should be same as R. Then only your Problem is correct. You can cross-check the problem once you get the final answer. Okay, I think you got my point. Means after getting the expression, you might ask, sir, how do you know the expression is correct or not? Okay, this expression is correct depends upon this. You have to write the dimension of this one, r. Then these are the three terms you are having in right hand side. The dimension of this one should be equal to the dimension of this term, equal to the dimension of this one. Then my dear, sir. Ella do dimension by length into velocity to mathe mu simplify madi ni mikon dimension barate. Illo ashte l mathe k divided idro dimension bari simplify madi ni mikon value barate. Illo ashte final dimension r dimension no r ye ni mikon same madi. Ko awa gyan ni problem correct. Illo ashte ne. Aga gyan ne nodi e expression mathe Buckingham's pi theorem expression is not same. Okay, so we can't say that problem is wrong. The dimension of r should be equal to the dimension of this term. Should be equal to the dimension of this term. Should be equal to the dimension of this term. Means all these three terms should be having the dimension of the r only. Note for you. If you if you are not understanding, no, you just drop me a comment. Uh, I can make a separate video for this one. Okay. Next problem number five. So this is second type of problem. Okay. What is the second type of problem? Means till now we are deriving an expression. We are getting a final expression and we are writing the dimensions for each term. If all the terms are same, then we can say it is a dimensionally homogeneous, or our expression is correct. But sometimes in the problem only, we will give the expression. You have to derive that expression. So this is a, that problem. Okay, a partially submerged body is stored in water. Resistance R to its motion depends on the mass density rho, dynamic viscosity mu of water. Length L of the body, velocity v of the body, acceleration to gravity g. Show that the resistance to the motion can be expressed in the form R is equal to rho L square v square pi of mu divided by rho v L comma L g by v square. So here you have to get this expression. First, you have to count the number of variables. There are six number of variables. So the only quantity that is R equals and the quantity that is R is dependent variable. Yes, R is dependent. Remaining pi are independent variable. You raise the power of independent variable. Okay, write the dimensions for all the variables. Means that this is Rayleigh method only. Okay, so I'll write the dimensions of all the variables. Then substitute here. As usual, you know, don't look at this expression. Okay, after arriving at our expression, later we can compare both the equation and we can rearrange the terms. That is okay. No need, to, no need to like that. Means I have to take rho first, l second. Don't worry at all. Okay, you take in a series way, rho mu l. Even though there is an interchange in this, uh, no issues. You just go on conducting this using this uh, regular Rayleigh method procedure. Okay. Now we equate the power of l. I got this one. Equate the powers of m. Equate the powers of t. Here there are three equation, but the number of unknowns are five. You have to write the three unknowns in terms of other two. Nearly last problem only is the same. It is like a previous case only. We are expressing three indices in terms of other two. So from this expression two, I have written a is equal to one minus of b. Or b is equal to one minus of a. Here up to uh, this up to you guys. Okay, so I'll take 
this one I have written here. Uh, A is equal to one minus of B. So here I have written A is equal to one minus B. Then from the expression third, I'll write it is minus two is equal to minus B minus C minus two E. You substitute and simplify D is equal to two minus B minus two E means D I have written in terms of B and E. A I have written in terms of B. Remind what is the remaining? C in terms of B and E is right. Means expressing C in terms of other three. How that will work? Okay, it is not like that. You have to take A, B, and C like that only. Here A have taken D. So you substitute both A and D in this expression. It is one. Okay, you, you don't follow this one. I have written I, again. I have written here. Okay, try to follow this one. Substituting this and simplifying, you will get. C is equal to two minus B plus two. Now you can check. C I have written in terms of B and E. D I have written in terms of B and E. A I have written in terms of B. Okay, expressing three in terms of other three. Okay, substituting that in this equation and you taking out the common constant term, rho L square V square. Then B the term nala group madi, E the term nala group. So B is not a negative. Is right? You take it to the denominator. Positive means keep it. That is mu rho to the power of minus b. Rho will go to the denominator. Correct. Mu plus b. I have written L minus b. That is L denominator. B minus b. Mu denominator whole to the power of b. Comma. That is E. E have the L. Then B to the power of minus two E. The denominator will go there. V square is there. G G to the power of Now you can compare with this expression whatever he has given whether it is correct or not. Yes, I have got the same expression. Therefore, it is correct. That's what I have said. Uh, no need to worry. You just do on the daily basis. Now the same problem I take in Buckingham's Pi theorem. I will check whether I am getting the same expression or not. If not, how to arrive at the final expression? Here also three repeating variables have to select. One I have taken length, velocity, and the Density means m is six three pi terms three repeating variable into one non repeating variable same like the previous case no issues I I don't want to again tell the same procedure so you get pi one is equal to r by rho l square v square uh, pi two equals mu by rho l v then pi three is equal to l g divided by v square therefore pi one is equal to the function of pi two comma pi three pi one is equal to R divided by rho l square v square is equal to f of mu by rho l v comma l g by v square. This is we have got. Therefore, R is equal to rho l square v square into pi of mu by rho l v comma l g by v square. I have got the same expression. Whatever he has given in the question, now it is correct. Next, we'll move on to the Sixth, using Buckingham's Pi theorem, find the expression for efficiency of a fan which depends on mass density rho, dynamic viscosity mu of the fluid, and angular velocity omega in diameter d. Okay, you found the number of variables. Here, it clearly has mentioned using Buckingham's Pi theorem. You have to get the expression for efficiency. That is efficiency, density, viscosity. Angular velocity omega, diameter d, and discharge u. One, two, three, four, five, six number of variables. N fundamental units three, six minus of three, three pi terms. Repeating variables. Now check it. The repeating variables. One should be of meter. That is diameter is there. That is the first repeating variable. Second should be of velocity or acceleration. Here angular velocity is given. I have to take angular velocity. Third density or viscosity to select as third. Here both density as well as viscosity is there. I'll take density. These are my three repeating variables. You write the dimensions for all this. Efficiency it is usually expressed in percentage. Therefore no unit. Therefore dimension is m zero l zero t zero. Then angular velocity it is radians per second. Per second as a token TV. Therefore it is t power minus one. Be careful in all those things. Okay, angular velocity and plane of the theorem. You will you usually write meter per second. Okay, if you write meter per second for angular velocity also, the entire problem will be wrong. Okay, so you have to be careful while writing the dimensions for each quantity. Then writing the pi terms, three repeating variable and one non-repeating variable like that we have written. You have taken an expression pi one like this. Equal to or same. Okay, you can cross-check the answers with the final expression. 